All right. For this video, I'm going to show you how to divide rational expressions. I'm going to be working through example number four, part A, on page 818 in your book. So you can follow along with me. This one looks like this. The square root of 7 divided by the square root of 2. Now, we don't really like having square roots in the bottom of a fraction because, well, I'm not really sure. It probably has something to do with not liking dividing by a, an irrational number. Uh, but we don't, so don't do it. This is a division problem, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn it into a division problem that doesn't have a square root on the bottom. So we call this rationalizing the denominator. It gives us uh, a denominator that's a rational number. Now, whenever we uh, do something to a fraction, um, we need to make sure not to change the value of the fraction. So I can multiply the top number by 2, but I have to multiply the bottom number by 2 as well. Why I would do that is anybody's guess. I don't know why you would want to do that. But uh, for us, what I want to do is I want to multiply by something that's going to turn the square root of 2 into something that's not a square root. The answer for what that is is it's the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2. Now if I multiply the bottom by that, I have to multiply the top by the same thing or else my fraction is going to have a different value. The square root of 7 times the square root of 2 is the square root and we multiply the numbers under the radical. So 7 times 2 is 14. That means that the square root of 7 divided by the square root of 2 is the same thing as the square root of 14 divided by 2. Now we like it this way, it's preferred this way. You can actually do this out by hand to uh, by doing the dividing with the decimal and long division and all that fun stuff you learned back in uh, fifth grade. Um, and that's why we like to do it. Let me do another example. This is example B, or example 4, part B. This one is the square root of 7, again, over the square root of 8n. So one of the things that we like to do when we're simplifying square roots is to simplify the radicals on the top and the bottom first. The square root of 7, I can't simplify because 7 is a prime number. That's just got to stay like that. But 8 is 4 times 2. So I'm going to write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2n. And what's the square root of 4? Why, it's 2. So this is the same as the square root of 7 over 2 times the square root of 2n. Now what we have is a radical expression it's simplified, but it's still got an irrational denominator. But now when we uh, rationalize the denominator, we'll end up with something we don't have to simplify as a fraction quite so much. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by what? I want to get rid of this square root, which means I'm going to multiply by that the same thing, the square root of 2n. Then when I do that, I'm going to have this 2 times the square root of 2n times the square root of 2n is just 2n. On top, we have to multiply by the same thing, by the square root of 2n. So on top, the square root of 7 times the square root of 2n is the square root of 14n, because you just multiply the 7 and the 2. And then there's one last step for us to do, and that's to multiply the 2 times 2n on the bottom, so 14n n under the radical on top and 4n on the bottom. And now this uh, expression over here has a rational denominator. We didn't change the, the size of this fraction, we just changed how we wrote it. It's just like reducing fractions and writing equivalent fractions. I hope that helps. Thanks.